eight o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ Roundtable's time. And you can see I have some great DJs here. As always, surrounded by a few. We have one not with us tonight. He is off in the great beyond and to the uh, great white north, basically. I guess uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. One of the Dakotas visiting family. Uh, he'll be uh, gone for next couple uh, episodes, probably returning back in the new year because we have this week and next week um, and maybe the week after, but we want, we're want we going to be off for the last two weeks, definitely, so people can enjoy their holidays and concentrate on things and, and have fun with their friends and family and be back after the new year. So if you are watching this on YouTube, you there will be tons of episodes you can go back on and watch. Uh, if you have not watched some of the older episodes, go back. There's over a year of episodes on here on YouTube. If you're watching this live on Twitch, there's also tons of episodes up on YouTube. And you can very easily go to YouTube and watch YouTube episodes. Uh, they're there. Um, and do we have a lost ball? Yeah. Oh, there's Mike James. He is coming in tonight, so we have a full table. And <laughs> my dog had lost her ball <laughs> and has it back now. So uh, all problems are all taken care. <laughs> What's going on, guys, out there? Uh, and hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself. The uh, Hey, Mike. What's Oh, Mike can't hear me. I'm give him a second or two to get in here. There he is. Mr. Mike James, how are you, sir? All the way from Central Illinois. Uh, Been a little bit. No, I've heard the audio thing. Good. <laughs> and also, I'll let you guys know a couple things. First thing first, if you guys get a chance to, if you do me a favor, click on the like button on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Help us out. Help us. Push this show more. Help us push this video more by, you know, kind of pushing the needle on the algorithm here at YouTube. And as well as make sure you click the bell icon so you know when we go live or we have new content coming out. I try to get stuff out on Mondays at noon Central Time just to get stuff out there. And hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves and having fun with everything and getting prepared for the great holiday season coming up. And again, like I said before, we will be, um, we will be uh, not uh, live uh, soon. So make sure that you mark your calendars down. And again, we're going to have definitely next week, uh, probably the week after, but I will tell you next week, 100% because I got to see, What's going on with my scheduling? <laughs> That's always a fun part. And uh, see what is going on. So uh, for the table, uh, I have a question here um, from uh, DJ Aga, which always uh, leaves great uh, questions and comments and stuff for the table. And Mike, you're making a lot of noise. Can you uh, mute yourself real quickly? Or get an iPhone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now we're not going iPhone, Android again. <laughs> we always fight about, uh, I know you guys don't want to watch it, get to see it offline, uh, but uh, <laughs> we always uh, talk about who's got better computers, Apple or Android. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I like my Android. I like my PC. Some people like their Apple and they like their yeah. uh, their Apple phones and their Apple computers and tablets and so forth. I like I like you know regular and airy. Yeah, the M3 pretty Max is there. pretty pretty badass. I, I I have a Samsung. I like my Samsung. All right, whatever. <laughs> I, I like my gaming computers. I like my I like my Samsung tablet. So you know, <laughs> every likes are there. That, that, that MacBook Pro M3 is definitely on my list for next year. Oh. You'll love it. It's so, so fast. And uh, I mean, just just with like normal everyday tasks, you're getting like 15 hours of battery life. 
And if you're like me and you want it at full brightness and you're doing more than just everyday tasks, like, uh, I mean, you're, you'll get at least eight to 10 hours. So that alone is, oh. it's, it's, it's a gnarly, I, I can't even get the fans to ever kick in. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably way more than I'll ever need, but future proof. Good to know. That's get the my black too. For next. The, the space black is a nice color. I think it would fit with your your whole dark vest look that you got going on. Oh, I, I've I've actually added suits to the whole wardrobe. I I I did the retail therapy thing again. I wasn't feeling so happy. I bought a dozen suits. <laughs> there and you, go. It, it's it, that time you know, there, there's there's sales, sales everywhere. Store. No joke. I mean, wow! How much? When you're getting like right now at Express, I think I got uh, one of their four or five hundred dollars suits for like one eighty nine out the door. Now, granted, mm -hmm. I may straight forty four or thirty six thirty. There is no altering lucky. anything. It, I, I wear it right off the rack, so it's just that easy. You're a lucky man. Be a fat oh, guy uh, like me, and I, I had to go to the fat guy store. So you know, uh, or if you're skinny like me, I not. I have to get. I am mine not a small statue like person. <laughs> I'm not a short man, nor am I a skinny man. So, <laughs> and, and I'm extra medium. So. Yeah, there you go. You got you guys all good. Uh, one of the things I also want to ask uh, uh, before I get to the question, um, I wanted to talk about Jeff real quickly. He put up a really cool picture on Instagram. And by the way, all their YouTube channels are connected down below. So make sure you click on go to their YouTube channel, support their YouTube channels, but follow them on social media, YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, um, threads, whatever else they ever endeavor they use. Uh, I don't know, Xbox, Sony, they're playing Minecraft. You'll join them, whatever you want to do. Uh, but one of the cool things, Jeff, um, I, I, were you at a Tesla store? Yeah. And yeah, you I saw that my wife's uh, Model Y. I bought my wife a Model Y about a month ago and uh, had to take it in to get the one of the doors was not closing 100% all the way. So they had to do an adjustment to it. So uh, I was there and, and while I was waiting, um, yeah, took a picture of the Cybertruck. Only five uh, out there in the, in the nation and uh, one was in Charlotte. So pretty cool to see. Yeah, the uh, the videos that uh, they put up there were pretty cool when they shot the side of it with a Tommy gun, a shotgun, a Glock, and then they um, pulled. The, the, I, now I kind of call BS on the the um, sled pull uh, because the wheels weren't spinning and the trucks weren't bouncing. But um, and I didn't really see much weight in that the, the box. But the thing is, it, it is very interesting. Um, Personally, I'm not a fan for the electric vehicles and for uh, the Cybertruck. I think it looks like a wedge, but I do think that uh, Tesla has uh, changed the, the look of electric vehicles and has put a lot of technology in there. And if I was looking at an electric vehicle, Tesla would be one of the ones I would look at um, for a vehicle because I think they have proven a lot of proven technology. They've gone through the teething uh, areas of electric vehicles and they understand it much more than even Ford, which I, I have a Ford. I have a Ford F-350. I love Ford stuff, but the thing is that even a Ford like a Ford Lightning or a Ford Mach-E, it's still, they're still, they're still toddlers versus, you know, Tesla is basically a teenager. So it, it, they have much more knowledge and understanding what's going on. Um, So here's the question, the first question for the group here is with the holiday season we we're just talking a little bit about retail uh buying and stuff like that all the sales have you seen a huge sale on gear or have you seen like you know the looks like the retailers are holding back on gear or you know for djs should be at speakers or whatever and are you looking at right now at some gear Maybe for 2024, I know uh, Brentley was talking about getting a possible PC for next year, but is it time to buy now or is it time to wait? So I'm going to start with Jeff because uh, Jeff was at a dealership looking at the toys and taking his wife vehicle in there. And I'm sure he was drooling at that Cybertruck there. Think about draining the Tahoe in and getting that. But uh, <laughs> what do you what do you think, Jeff? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sad. I, I don't need a lot right now. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm happy with my gear. Uh, it all works great. Uh, I've got a, a decent amount, you know, uh, spent and in, uh, put into it. Um, I've got a, two or three different setups that work for me. I've got the large setup if I'm doing a prom or a, uh, you know, large school event up to, you know, seven, 800 kids. I can, I can bring enough speaker power for that. I've got the, a nice white wedding set up with the uh, Maui 28 Gen 2s, um, you know, and, and, you know, the central to all that is my uh, DJ stand with the uh, video monitor up front playing music videos. So I'm, I'm pretty good. My, my computer is only uh, about two years old, so it's decent. Um, you know, I, I'm not really looking to update anything. The only thing that may be on the radar for the next year or two is I may look at the Wolf Mix uh, lighting control um, just to see if that's something I want to go experiment with. Uh, but you know, other than that, I'm I'm set. Okay, that that's that's a very important thing, especially with you know knowing where you're at. But again, is there anything that you may if someone catches your eye, would you hop out and buy it? Like. Let's say if, if LD says everything a, catches my eye. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we are looking. It's it's, it's kind of I mean, like, you know, I subscribe to just about every one of the um, you know retailers. You know, all the ads come in from my DJ now from Sweetwater. You know, it's like you know the past two weeks, especially you know, ads have just been rolling in, and I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. But you know, like I said, I'm at a good oh, spot. Oh yeah. You know, you get you get stuff from uh, B and H. Uh, I got, I probably get thirty emails a day, not just for advertisement for certain uh, things like you know, not and stuff like that, and wedding shows, but especially the deals right now for some of the stuff from a lot of retailers like Sweetwater or uh, uh, NFL X Pro, or yeah, you know, I can go through a list of everything I get. Uh, PSSL, there's a huge list of stuff. But uh, you're always, I'm always keeping my eye out for things. I'm hopefully you're keeping your eye out too. So I'm going to go over to my, my friend, my brother from Ohio, just a little bit east of us. And yeah. also uh, who is a awesome, awesome DJ. And he, uh, I, I know you picked up uh, the Harbinger uh, line arrays that you've used. Kind of like I used with my Maui fives at smaller gigs and they work very successful for you. But uh, have you been keeping your eye on uh, like Guitar Center or anything like that? And are you eyeing something that you might pick up uh, for the holiday season right now? Because it's not a special. Um, not any gear, but basically, I had just bought um some. Was it the Jams Galaxy tubes? It comes like six in a pack. I just got that for the last wedding, and I also got the Insta um, 360 camera. So those was my two newest things <laughs> I bought. So as far as sales, I have bought um, a couple of accessories, like the um, the stick that goes with it, the stick and the mount that go on, onto my um, Rockville DJ booth so I can film. Um, as far as a computer, I had just had to recently replace my computer. So all my stuff came before the, the break. But other than that, I've been looking at a lot of the software and... Um, the subscription, um, like the DJ pools where they give you the discounts. So that's what I've been looking at and jumping on. I'm glad you brought up DJ pools because one of the pools that I really recommend to any DJ out there is from promo only. Uh, promo only is a premium uh, pool and they have DJ pool. And one of the things they just added to pool is actually a search engine and a library from a, another a licensed pool with licensed music uh, that's based out of the UK called I Like Music. Um, and you can search that pool and you can buy credits and download the songs cheaper than Amazon for the most part for most songs, depending on how you buy the songs. Um, you buy uh, so many tokens to get songs, but... It is a great amount of music, and there's a lot of music on there. Um, and I definitely would say that is something that if you're looking at music pools, promo only is again not a cheap service. You know, I, I pay a hundred bucks a month just to them for music and video, but it's all licensed. And then they have that uh, now they it is added for the 5.0.2 or something like that on their uh, pool system. And they had that search that I can now buy music 
from them directly um, from another service that is licensed for uh, for artists. And you know, we do have some people here who are artists, like yourself, Dwayne. You 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 play instruments. Uh, DJ Brantley plays instruments. DJ Mike James is also a former uh, uh, band guy. So we want to make sure that you know people who are doing that they make some money. Um, we want to make sure they also they get the the, 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 the kudos for coming up with those songs. And I'm going to go to Mike James in Central Illinois, who would just put up a gig log I saw this morning. Um, he did a little outdoor event. Uh, him and uh, Nathan, uh, which has been on the show tons of times, DJ Fire. Uh, him and Nathan um, did a uh, gig with lighting on a outdoor rink. Uh, are you looking for anything for this holiday season? Or are you going to start selling your scrims that you build for your uh for your booth, uh, I'd have to I'd have to clear that with the wife. She she helps me make a lot of that stuff. Like I, I'll pick out the designs and whatnot like that. But uh, she does most of the sewing and all of that stuff as far as like making those things work. But uh, we've just gotten super lucky, you know. I mean, on the creative side of us, you know, being able to pick designs, especially like what we did for Halloween, and then. Now, the, the first version of what I did for Christmas, which I have matching totem covers for that also. So that was sort of an experiment that uh, that we did. But um, I don't know, man, that custom design covers out of UK, those guys are so flipping expensive, you know, to try to get something that might be close to my booth or my totems, you know, 300 and something dollars. And I, how we make our stuff for way cheaper than that. You know what I mean? But again, it, it has to do with us you know, having the ability to do it. You know what I'm saying? But should we sell them? Uh, po possibly. I, I don't know. Does my wife want another job? I, I seriously doubt it. Oh, again, if she wants to put the needle to thread and to needle and thread to, uh, you know, to fabric, I'm sure that you could probably be a little bit, a little bit cheaper, but you got to make some money. It's like anything else. Time, material, and her expertise always costs oh, money. Yes. like, just just like doing a bid for a gig. So it's the same thing. So I'm going to go with DJ Brantley, I, the man with the toad booth who got a toad booth this summer um, and has some cool new stuff, but always likes to buy things and says he his therapy is buying. So what therapy session are you in now, sir? Well, I'm definitely going to get a new laptop next year, and I know it's going to run me about 35 bucks. So with that kind of a price tag, everything else that I've thought out around it, I think next year I've got all, you know, I've got enough cabling, enough uplighting and all that. I think now I'm going to go after my big ticket items for next year. And uh, with all the crap that's been with these Pioneer decks, my Rev 5 has this, I, which I've had for two months, is and it's a firmware problem. And I finally heard it. I before I just thought it was my my stage monitor I was using coming out of the booth out, but it has a squ a squelch or a screech going through it now, and it's a firmware issue. So between that, having to send my Flex Ten back twice, I'm gonna go and get an S11 and two CDJ three thousand. And you, have have you talked to Pioneer Support about uh, your five? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And, and they, they don't it? have a fix for it yet. Sorry, you're gonna have to wait till we figure it out. It's like, really? I've bought three of your decks this summer, and one thus far actually has not given me any issues. And so at that point, I don't want to make the hop to Serato. And I've really thought about that a lot. Not only do I dislike the interface of Serato on screen, uh, but I've checked out the um, other stuff that, you know, other decks that are similar, but just don't feel the same. So S11, two CJs is where I'm going with next. And outside of like the college bar gigs, which I will just use one of my SX2s or something. So if something gets spilled or anything like that, okay, fine, whatever. And then um, I, there, I don't know who makes them, but they're the Hex Lights. Uh, I don't know the brand name company. But they're the big, they have eight little hex lights inside of them. So they're about a foot 
around and they're about yay big uh very something variants or varial or something out of europe has is one of the companies i've seen but i came across the chinese version of it the other day and i saved it uh, and because i want to update my lighting rig where i've got better lights for my premium package and two just two bars that have eight par cans on them for my basic pack Package to make a very big distinction between the two, so I'm not having to upgrade or add stuff to anything. I'm gonna do like two par, you know, par bars, like I said, and then really rework my dance lights. So I'm thinking like four of those with, you know, um, four what, uh, what are they? Wash effects, uh, two, not the hex, but the two. So it has all the color arrays, but it didn't have anything else but the wash effects in it. And couple that with, you know, like eight show a slim bars. And I think I will be a little bit happier with the way my lighting rig looks for my premium package. But that's about the long and the short of it. I mean, I'm ser because I've spent fruitlessly on odds and ends this year, next year, just big ticket stuff, make sure everything's in working order to go into 2025. Okay. All right. So, Matt, finally, it's to you. Uh, you're going to get some more dual 18 subs, or you're going to get uh, dual 45-inch <laughs> subs, or... Uh, the new hundred inch well, subs coming in, or what? Let me, let me give you the rundown. So, uh, yes, I'm getting a dual 18, um, the RCF 8008. Um, it's the NX series, so that'll match really well with the new NX tops I have. Um, plus, just yeah, um, I'm getting uh, lighting's already been upgraded. I just haven't had a chance to program it yet, but I've already kind of got some ideas of what I'm doing with it all. Um, I the only thing I I have the the new Rain Four. I don't know if you saw that on my story. So now that that and Serato is supported by Sonoma with Mac, I'm gonna start migrating to Serato or maybe Virtual DJ. I haven't decided yet, uh, or both. I'll maybe try both. Um, and then um, we got some new DJ furniture booth. Not like not like those. Not like those. You know, I'm never gonna do one of those. But uh, it's like a custom facade kind of thing that I found from China, uh, kind of like the pipe and drape backdrop where it just snaps together like the pillowcase backdrops for photo booths, but in a DJ booth form. So that's coming. And uh, the only thing I haven't pulled the trigger on yet that I'm still deciding is the well sticks, which are like the Astera tubes. I really, really want those because my Chinese LED tubes are pretty much done. Um, obviously so those i haven't pulled the trigger on yet because 3500 which is the best price sweetwater has given me for a set of six of them is still a lot of money and uh i mean i gotta <laughs> think that that's like what is that 700 a tube almost yeah. uh no not even 600 a tube so it's uh that's that's a big investment for a three foot piece of uh led so times six so Talk about tubes. This is something I have on the, on my YouTube channel, but these are cheap, cheap, cheap tubes. I've used them here for DJing on Twitch and stuff like that. And I've actually taken a couple uh, gigs, give it a little light to try out actual gigs. These are two of them for a hundred bucks. They're not bright. They're not DMXable. They don't connect. They don't link up. They don't sync up. Uh, they do sound active, but they don't do it right. Um this is you want to go really low end. <laughs> you know, you can get two of these for a hundred bucks off of Amazon. If you want to spend money on good lights, that's where the you know the rubber hits the road, basically. And you need to look at go, okay, fine, great. Uh Sarah's are expensive. You know, again, I'm over five grand in with six Asteras, a tablet, a transmitter, and everything. Uh, but the light show they give, it, it's it's phenomenal. And that's the thing is that, again, I have the two opposite ends of the spectrum. I have next to me right now, you know, the cheapest lights I can get on Amazon that look like, you know, tubes versus having the real deal. And they, again, these little lights right here, not bad little lights. They're nice little, like, you know, again, you want you out for a holiday party or something like that, have one, one, one green Something very, very basic that got destroyed, you're not worried about, fine, great. 
But Asteras and the other tubes, when you put money out, the color on them and what they can do, the software is amazing. So I would definitely would say if you're going to spend some money, that's not a bad yeah. thing. And, uh, Brett, and the, well you, sticks, uh, the well sticks are the well sticks are like the Asteras, but they're the protocol for the DMX is a lot easier to adapt to a generic DMX sender uh, system, whereas Astera they have their own proprietary connection point type thing. Whereas Chevet, it's basically, it's built in. You just need the Chevet um, uh, WDMX transmitter, but like it, it works the same as the Chinese lights, where it's six or seven channels, and then one of them is program. And then one of them speeds. So you can like do a bunch of the auto programs, but like DMX them so that they all link up or they go one to the next. And then you could do some cool stuff like that. So I, I always think about like how I'm going to use a light before I buy it. I don't just buy something because it looks cool or, uh, you know, I always ask how many DMX channels is it and can it be run in this mode? And like I'm thinking to myself, can I use this to sync with the rest of my light show and make it work before I actually buy it? So. Even though it doesn't seem like that, it seems like I just buy stuff just to buy stuff. No, I, I always have a plan. So I'm well, trying you to. Should. You buy should. My hex towers, the the lights that Bradley was talking about, the like hex lights. Um, well, he was probably talking about like actual little hex diodes, but mine are those little actual hexagon looking things that are on a pole with six of them, and they do the the blinder effect and the rotating LED. And I've used them three times, and I'd like to use them a lot more. So I uh, the problem is they're only five feet i think they're six feet tall and uh i can't put them on the ground because people are just going to crowd in front of them and not get a light show so i can put a piece of truss underneath because they have a truss pin on the bottom that i could just hop right in there so i might i might look into that but a lot of a lot of ideas in the works but i'm in the middle of moving and moving storage units so january is when i'm going to really dive into programming everything and getting it all done and that's that's the thing is you know making sure you have a plan if you're buying you put money out for anything that's the importance of. But DJ Brantley, I'm going to say if you're looking for lights, I know Mike James deals a lot with sheds. I would definitely talk to him or to Nathan, and the other person I would talk to is Matt because again he deals a lot directly with a lot of Chinese manufacturers. So if you're looking for the the Chinese knockoff of those lights, you know a copy clone whatever you want to call it. And you want to go for one of those manufacturers? Talk to them. They dealt with those manufacturers. I will. I mean, part of it is what lights I'm buying have to be compatible with record box lighting. All right. So that's why I like Chauvet Wash Effects too. I know I can go click, 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 drop it in my you know drop it in the panel, and I'm good to go once I've numbered it. Some of the and like the Chinese knockoff ones, for example, I know. Sheds, Both, and Top Light all run on the same DMX, you know, controls as the Rockville Best Par 50s. And I only found that out just by screwing around one day and wasn't paying attention. DMX the wrong light. And I'm like, oh, wait, it's working. This is kind of cool. And then did the rest of them. So I know those will work. But when I get, you know, and maybe I think it's Veriflex or Veritex or something or Vartec. I can't remember the exact name of the European model. And they're not cheap when they come to you know, getting them. But I'm really considering like four of those. And maybe not even having to deal with using, you know, anything but those and uh, four wash effects and not even having slim hearts. Yeah. So that's, I'm that, that's that's one of the things also I know you use the uh the DMX software part in record box. Um I want to I want to see a show of hands here. Um yeah. Because again, Matt brought up a good thing. He's you know switching controllers over, switching software over. Um, how many DJs here are virtual DJ DJs? I know I am. Uh, Jeff is. So we're virtual DJ. And then Brantley usually primarily uses Record Box. I only, use, Wayne, I only use Record Box. Okay, but you can't. You can use Serato. You're f somewhat familiar with it, right? I, I've used it. I checked it out, but it's just. Not for you. It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's again, everybody likes different things. And then Dwayne, you you do Serato. Yep. And I have virtual I had I started off on virtual DJ until I got my um Serato um controller, the XX2. Then when I went over to Serato, I just stayed with it. But I have both of them. But I mainly do Serato. 
and, and Mike uses another software. So it, it, it's 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 very interesting on what everyone uses for software for uh, for mixing and DJing and for uh, uh, for stuff. And again, Recordbox does have that DMX. Uh, again, I have Astera. Astera has their own software, which I use in a tablet. Um, so everyone has different things to do. And, or I also have Chave, uh, their software for DMX too. I have it on a computer. So if I want to do like my moving heads, my Chave moving heads and stuff, I can DMX them with the Chave uh, Show Express. I have the software. So it is uh, very interesting. Let's uh, let us move on to the next part of the show for the next question. So again, this is from uh, I was talking a little before of uh, DJ, DJ Aga. I uh, had a question. Um, he uh, said, uh, "Question: Managing time for your business and time for your family uh, got me thinking about a question." So. I'm going to touch back on this last time we talked about, and I said, you guys need to make sure you spend time about with your family, especially the holiday season, you know, spend time for yourself to just reflect and decompress and think about things and try to just uh, enjoy this season with your friends and family, but also take time for yourself and just, you know, kind of, you know, maybe, Sit back, relax, and drift off for a few minutes and just concentrate and make sure that you feel good up here so you feel good mm -hmm. for the rest of the holiday season and it doesn't stress you out, especially some gigs and stuff like that coming up. You want to make sure you're you're set. Um, and he said uh, he lives in San Antonio, which where he lives now, but he grew up in upstate New York, and the motto uh, there is hook me up and I will hook you up. So basically, quid pro quo, um, there in upstate New York. Uh, does anyone do a free gig or extremely discounted price for a not so close friend or an acquaintance with hopes that they will hook them up in the future or even a uh, favor for a uh, a friend to hook up, um, you know, give a friend a free party or free this, or free that, and then hopefully they hook them up down the road with whatever. So uh, I'm going to start off with Mike in central Illinois there. Uh, do you hook up with other people? Do you like, you know, say, Hey, um, I have this equipment, you have whatever it is. I'll trade you, you know, a three hour party or a five hour party. If you do, you cut my lawn or you'll come fix my sink or whatever. Um, do you do that? Have you done that? Would you do that? Uh, it depends. I, I don't know around here. Nothing's really that like up front. You no, know, do I do this kind of things? Like I'll, I'll donate time and services for worthy benefits, things along those lines. And there is some exposure in that, which I guess has really gotten me into working more with the university and the city and the tourism department and everybody else. that's now kind of contracting me to do better paying gigs and jobs. So it is not above me to uh, to to help out a you know benefit or cancer survivor. D depending, I mean, depending on what the cause is, and not necessarily if I'm really good friends with the people. You know what I mean? Because that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. But uh, more times than not, it's more how it's presented to me. And if I can see intrinsic value in it for myself down the road, that's one thing. That's fine. And even if I don't, uh, sometimes I do like to contribute and give back in those certain sense instances, you know. Okay. And that, that right there is always good, you know, uh, donating to uh, charities and stuff like that. But, I, I, again, I think the, the question is more, do, 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 and you said you don't run into it there, but the question is more of, you know, you know, if some a friend comes to you, hey, hey, bro, can you hook me up? Can you, uh, can you do this? You know, uh, Dwayne, how about you? How about you in Ohio? Do you run into that? You know, a friend, a friend, family member, a friend of me, <laughs> someone coming to you and say, hey, uh, can you hook me up with a, you know, a free party for X, Y, Z, and I will wash your car for uh, every day for a month or something. I don't, whatever it is, do you run into that? Uh, yeah. In fact, um, I did, did one for Labor Day weekend, which led to a um, a Christmas party, which is going to lead to something more and more. So I do that all the time, especially with working with the community. I found that in my case, 
all of my gratifications is always delayed. I found that when I do like the community kind of stuff or the kickbacks, it usually comes back full circle. Somebody sees me and that's how I get another gig that pays. So I, it it makes up. So yeah, I do that all the time because I'm always around the community kids or church or whatever. Okay. That, so you're seeing you're seeing a benefit by giving a little, but you're getting a lot back because someone sees you at said party and goes, Oh wow, hey, he's a good DJ. He knows how to make people dance. I want him for my fill in the blank here event and hires you for that and you get paid for that. Okay. So you kind of look at it kind of like advertisement, kind of, you know, you're doing it. Right your now, because remember, yes, yeah, remember, I didn't start really doing the the pro DJ thing till like 2015, 2016. I was just doing it, you know, just for fun. And then you like, they were like, you need to really start charging. So I'm transitioning into being a professional DJ. So well, I was doing that all the time. You transitioned a long time ago, sir. I know how you are. You, <laughs> you are, you've been a professional. If you may have been charging, you were professional. Trust me. I've, I've seen a lot of your videos and I, I know how you do things. And I know how you are as a person. You are very, very professional. I definitely would say you've been a professional for a long time. So I'm going to go out to California to DJ Salsas. Do you trade, you know, oh, do you hook up friends? Uh, it's so I don't, I mean, it's weird because there's such a debate in the DJ community. Like, to me, I, I've had this year, I had a coordinator that I is like one of the only two that I recommend. And she had her wedding and she asked me to DJ it. So obviously it wasn't free, but like I hooked her up with a good deal. And then my other guy got married who was like a DJ of mine and I hooked him up. So I don't do anything for free, but what I do is, is I try to like, I, I'm not the kind of person that's like, Hey, if you want to support my business, full price is full price. No, if you value your friendship with somebody, like hook them up a little bit. Like, I I'd feel if if I like I have a friend that has a storage unit next to mine. He lets me borrow gear anytime for free, and I do the same for him. And it's just like a mutual relationship. Like we're homies. That's what we do. Um, I it's, yeah. But in terms of like free gigs, no, I don't I don't do anything for free. Um, there's no such thing as exposure. Um, I mean, I guess there is, but I, I, I've been burned by that once or twice. So, uh, I learned my lesson. So I, I don't really, I don't really get too many from like community. Um, I don't, I don't have like, I'm not an upstanding citizen of Orange County, apparently, I guess. I don't know. I don't really do anything for the city. I don't do anything. I'm doing something for like, uh, a police association, a, a holiday party in a couple weeks. So there's that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, California is competitive, and it's 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 expensive to live here. So we got to get paid for what we do. Did they uh, run a background check on you before they uh, hired you for the <laughs> party to make sure that uh, you don't have any wants or warrants out there? <laughs> see my see my fifteen assault charges back in college. No, no, they didn't see that. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly assaulted. Yeah. You know, allegedly yeah, having yeah, charges. Nothing, nothing, nothing's concrete. You know. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, I, I'm I'm Jewish. We have good lawyers. It sticks. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, you know it, it's one of the things that uh, I've heard before. Hook me up, bro, on things. So I'm gonna go to uh, one of my bros up in Wisconsin, uh, and if someone says, "Hey, hook me up, bro. Uh, can you come DJ at my fill in blank?" Would you go do it? Give a discount if there's a lot of hey, dude. There's gonna be a lot of pretty chicks there who are single, or there's going to be tons of exposure of people can get married. Or hey, you know what, bro? You can have all the beer you want, um, and I'll hook you up with uh, some uh, some cheeseburgers from McDonald's or whatever. What, what, what is your uh, what is your uh, your thought of that? So the gigs that I take on for free are specifically just for that and they're me giving back to my community. So when I was doing the big drag show here in lacrosse, I was doing it for free, but one of the DJs in my company is better suited for the show. So I handed it off to her. I'm like, you know what? You're a better fit. You and take this off my hands. Part and parcel, I can gig a little bit more because of it. 
But when it comes to hooking people up, I most of my friends know not to ask me. And reason being, they know I'm a single parent. They know that I've got to take care of my kid and I have her all the time. Plus, she has really expensive tastes. Going to Green Bay this weekend was painful. Even though I gigged, all the money I made for my gigs this weekend got blown by my kid. But I will, for example, one of the weddings I actually booked today is a friend who just had a kid, used to work at one of the same venues I worked at. And when uh, she met, when we were talking about it, I'm like, you know what? I will cut you a big fat deal on this, partly because they're doing it at celebrations. And what I didn't tell her was I'm there the night before, so... I will hook you up fat because I can just literally leave my gear in that spot and walk out the door at midnight. I can even not have to touch anything. So when it comes to scenarios like that or uh, one of the bars I used to DJ for in town, or not in La Crosse proper, but just a few towns north of here, the owner's getting married. He's like, I need you. And it's something I normally would never do four or five hours. It's just not in my want to do it. It's not just because the money but it's because you know you're not in touch with your entire crowd if you're only doing the reception. But because it's you know this bar owner and I know what he listens to and all of his friends at the bar listen to, I hooked him up really big. Plus, it's on a sandbar and it, it, it's a whole different kind of thing. So to be able to say I DJ at a wedding on a sandbar and outdoors, middle of somewhere where it won't be super hot, that's cool. And some other bar owners or venue owners. By all means, you've been booking me left and right the last seven, eight years while I've been living in La Crosse. Of course, I will hook you up. There's You don't even have to ask. I will even offer it out the gate. But my friends, you know, they know better than to ask me to hook them up. But will I? Yeah, of course I'm going to, you know, people I'm DJing, my friends who I'm DJing weddings for, I've probably known the last 10 to 30 years of my life. There's, you know, that friendship is worth more than a few dollars. Yeah, and that's that's the important thing. I, in this past weekend, I was uh, cheering on for Kansas City. I was hoping they were going to uh, win. And, uh, you know, it, it was, hey, I'm a Bears fan, man. But, you know, anyone who beats oh, the I Packers, know. you know, I, I got hope I got hope for my Bears, you know. I, I, I don't think they're be doing much, but still, you know. Got got to play spoilers for everyone else. Uh, unfortunately, oh, yeah, Detroit is like the best record ever since like the '60s, and we 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 can talk football hilarious. here because we're all football fans here too. So, um, it was a very interesting weekend this past weekend. Uh, but I'm sure you probably had a fun time up there, and uh, hopefully made a few bucks in the uh, oh yeah in the kitty uh, all that. And it, it it's a it's a hard thing, especially you know people ask for hookups. Sometimes it can be um, a pain. And here's one of the things that I'm thinking about before I get to Jeff, because I got Jeff or asked Jeff the same question, but sometimes people who get things for free don't appreciate it. And that's one of the things I do feel you have to be very careful. If I go to Mike, say, hey, Mike, I have a party. Can you come up here to Chicago, drive the two and a half, three hours? I'll give you gas money, but can you DJ a, a party for me? Uh, I'm going to have it for myself. I don't want to DJ it. I would I feel I'm obligated to pay him something because again I know what it's like being a DJ. I could not ask him to come up here and do it for free. Just let me if I went to Brett Lee or any DJ here, I say, hey Dwayne, you want to come over to Chicago? I'll buy a deep dish pizza and you know pay you know pay you uh, some money for DJing something. I would definitely would say, hey, you know, it's something that you should look at what the person's doing if they're a plumber, or electrician. They're coming over and doing something. It's it, it, it's it's a little more than just give them a six pack of beer and sit back and be their friend. That's an important thing. Yes, you want to have friends and stuff like that. But if they're doing something, especially they have to work really hard at. It. It's not a quick, simple, two minute job. Like, hey, uh, this light switch is not working. Oh, hey, let me you can another switch here. Let me switch it out real quick. You know, they're electrician. Boom, done or over with. Versus, hey, I'm DJing a party for you. That's six hours long. Again, you have to look what you're doing and see if the person appreciates it and they get back to you. So, Jeff, in uh, beautiful North Carolina down there, um, have you done free stuff uh, for the hook-me-up-bro deal and uh, to get stuff back? And 
what has been your experience with it? No, I have not done any hook me up um, that I can recall. I mean, yeah, I mean, I haven't had many requests for that. You know, in college, it was uh, give me 50 bucks. I'll take my stereo down to the uh, basement of the dorm and play music for four hours and all the beer I can drink. Uh, that was, you know, kind of the hook me up, yeah, I guess. But uh, since I was the only one in the in our dorm that had speakers <laughs> that were taller than me standing. So it was the logical choice. Let's hire this guy, you know. Um, but, you know, locally, uh, I give discounts to the local schools that my kids go to. Uh, that's just me giving back to the community in some way. It pays itself off in many fold by, uh, parents, uh, you know, seeing me at these events and, um, especially like the, the, um, father daughter dance in elementary. Uh, I don't know how many, uh, gigs I've gotten just, uh, being handed out my business card at those events and it's paid for itself many times over, um, you know, I was just looking through YouTube here. Uh, DJ Joe Bunn has a video out called DJ fundraisers are good for your soul and your brand. And I agree with that to some extent, you know, if it's a fundraiser, um, sure, you know, um, twofold there, you know, one, it's getting your name out there. It's showing that you care about, you know, a certain event or, or a clause, but hey, you know, you can also write that off on your uh, taxes next year. You know, that's, uh, you know, put down the full amount and uh, give into that charity or whatever the fundraiser is. But you know, it, it also gets your name and your brand out there, which is important. And, um, you know, so, so many DJs brands are so bad that, you know, everybody thinks that, okay, you're, you're a DJ. Okay. Are you playing down at the local bar or the, you know, the, the, you know, where, where you know, any, any kind of teen dance place or, you know, where, where are you DJing? And that's what they think. They don't think that, you know, no, I do school dances and weddings, you know? Uh, yeah. So, so the brand is important to, to get that out there to people that, Hey, this is what I do. I'm not, I don't just, you know, spin records at, at a bar, or I don't just spin records like uh, at one place. I, I do multiple things, you know. So it's good to get that information out there and the brand out there. So, uh, so I feel like at any any time you can, you know, do something, help out the community, and it helps your brand out as well. It's a win win. Yeah, and that's that's important. That's an important thing is to kind of know again going back to knowing what you're doing, but also you know having that. Uh, saturation and option to get your business card out and get information out uh, to people, I, I feel is very important. And oh, Mike looks like Mike dropped off here. Uh, he probably he'll probably be back in. Um, but you know, we got a couple guys here. Like you know, Mike is one of the guys. Uh, Brentley, uh, he does uh, bars. Uh, Mike does bars. And again, they have a brand at those bars. People know them at those bars. That hey, DJ Brentley is on Tuesday nights at you know, at Animal House or I know it's in the bars. He goes, he talks about him enough. Um, yeah. And, you know, Mike has his place also a couple of places he goes to and does, and, but people know that and they know where they're going to get there and that quality. If you're a bar DJ who just does bars, just goes from bar to bar to bar to bar, you have a brand. And the thing is that you want to be the best possible in that brand. If you are a multi, you know, service uh, DJ, it means you do kids and marriage, you do weddings, you do birthdays, you do, you do whatever comes your way. Great. If you do one thing, do it great. And you know, I only do weddings. I don't do other events. So people come to me and ask me, "Hey, do what? Can you do this?" Uh, no, uh, I can give you someone else who will do it, but I don't. That's my choosing, and that's that's the thing is that I try to you know, look at stuff and how to best market things. And that's the hardest thing. This is a marketing thing. You know, if you're giving up your time, your equipment, your expertise to do something that is marketing and you have to look at, we get the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys about this one that uh, Tracy and I did back in 2020. Um, this is the end of 2020, a uh, kid, um, just got off of his last treatment for cancer. He having a, a party for it. And they were on the news asking for trucks, tons and tons of trucks 
for his, you know, getting off the medication, getting off his last um, amount of chemo, and he's get to ring the bell at the, the cancer center and so forth and so on, that he's done with his treatment and stuff like that. That was his last uh, treatment, and he wanted to celebrate with a par- with a parade. So the the village of Arthur Heights um, and a uh, bunch of companies, I mean, tons of companies came there. Uh, we donated our services for music and for sound for it. I had no banners up and I don't put banners up. I don't put my, my name is not on the computers or that. I, I, you know, that's the way I roll, but I didn't say anything. We didn't put it on social media that we did this. Look at what we did. Look, and that to me is because the fact that sometimes being quiet about what you do and just do it is more of your, it's not about you. It's about the event. It's about the cause. And this to us was about the cause. It was this kid celebrating that he was done with his treatment. And this is during, you know, during a pandemic. And uh, this is all these people were coming out with all these vehicles. We had our truck and our van in the parade. He was all struck when the van pulled up and we're getting gear out to set up. And we just, you know, put a couple of speakers up and we're doing music and stuff like that. And, uh, but it was, it was cool. All the vehicles coming through, it fire trucks, police cars. They had a, a Jeep group come in, do all these tricks with their Jeeps and stuff. And it was great to be part of that, but I never said my name, never said anything. I didn't, you know, it's one of the things that sometimes doing that for a charity, you're much better off because being humble when you donate something is always good. And being humble on what you do is always good too. And with that said, um, I want to go through a couple of things here in the chat. I got a hey, y'all, from uh, Fred, the, uh, the godson. Um, hey, fam, I got that. <laughs> uh, and DJ Adrian, hello, peeps. And he uses Serato. So we got that right there. Uh, really quickly before we go, because it is holiday season, um, and because we got a lot going on with everything, uh, I'm going to ask you guys really quickly, are you done with your Christmas shopping for your family? I'm going to ask you that question. And DJ Bradley, you're going to be my first victim. Are you done shopping for your daughter and your mom and for anyone else? I ain't even done it yet. <laughs> I ain't even done none of it. You know, you know, today is a fifth. You have basically 19 days. Yep. I, I know what my daughter wants. I'm going to order that tomorrow, and everybody else is getting gift cards. My status quo, make it easy, get what you want. Here you go. Okay. Dwayne, how about you? How are you over there with the holiday season? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you I, haven't, spend- I haven't thought about it yet. Yeah, I'm too busy getting ready for these recitals and programs and all that. So I'll probably do it the the weekend before because I, I think we get out on the 22nd. So I'll probably be rushing out trying to do it that Friday or Saturday. Or I just do like um Brent over there, just give out gift cards and be done with it. Or my mom, my mom always hands us the big can of popcorn each time. <laughs> I love mom. Give mom a hug. Give mom a kiss. <laughs> yeah, I love the big thing of popcorn. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what about you? Are you uh, are you uh, done shopping yet? No, no, nowhere near. You know, I'll I'll go to Costco the week before, and uh, you know, one trip, knock it out, everything. I'll just <laughs> go through the aisles and uh, buy what I need to buy and be done with it. So yeah, I've got go. one of my sons turns. Uh, He's he's turning fourteen uh, in eleven days, so it's uh, yeah. I gotta gotta worry about that too. So that kind of sucks having birthdays in December's, but that's okay. My my granddaughter turns uh, eight tomorrow. Tomorrow's her birthday, so yeah, she turns eight tomorrow. And Saturday before we have a gig, we have her little party. And this is you know again, I'm doing music, but I'm doing very basic. I'm not doing DJing. I have preset stuff I've recorded from Twitch. I'll take those Twitch uh, plays that I have recorded, put them together, put them on a tablet, r- and run a Maui 5 because I have to use a Maui 5 later at night for a gig. So I'll use a Maui 5 tablet 
and put that up and um yeah i'll use uh i'll grab my two little light sticks too for her so that you have some dance lighting there uh they're usually not dancing at eight-year-olds you know little girls they don't do anything so matt i know you have eight crazy yeah. nights of gifts and stuff like that because of hanukkah um what about are you done with hanukkah shopping this year no i haven't even started uh i mean my I told my parents, just get me stuff for the new apartment. I uh, could really use an ironing board. And um, what else? A couple of light you know fixtures, how- some uh, some artwork, uh, you know, little things like that. I don't really, I mean, like, the only things I want personally are all DJ stuff. And, like, I'm not going to say, hey, buy these $3,500 lights for me. <laughs> so, uh, they're not like they would anyway. But, uh I, I'm I'm a very anti gift card person. I hate receiving gift cards and I hate giving gift cards. I think it's like I to me it's the it's the easy way out, but it's the lazy way out. It's like I get it, like yeah, go find something you like, but to me I I find joy in finding that one creative present that the person has like never thought about that you just like they're like, Oh my god, this is so cool. Like, for example, if you ever go to um so obviously you've heard of Wayfair, which is the furniture online, whatever. There's another one called Homery. So think of like Alibaba, but for home products. So like they have the most outrageous furniture imaginable. And one of the pieces is a a dog that's like a statue and like a marble. It's like a marble dog statue holding a gold tray that's like a little coffee table. And it's just, it's, it's like $120, but like... Uh, I'm not going to get that, but that's like an example of, you know, that's a creative, fun gift. I just, I like seeing the expression on people's face when you give them something that's not like a gift card or money. So, uh, yes, I'm doing because I'm show, so whatever. But I'm getting my DJs their own neon signs in their own logo. Uh, that's my little DJs and my lighting company that does stuff when I'm there. Okay. Well, here's one of the things I will tell you this. Uh, of many years of being in retail management, I've always seen people coming for the last minute, the first, last week of Christmas. It's always crazy. A lot of stuff is gone. A lot of specials are gone, stuff like that. Um, for you guys who are procrastinating and not even looking at the date, not seeing it, <laughs> not knowing things, um, I definitely would say sooner than later is better. Or as you're going to go to Costco and buy a big, huge thing of popcorn, because that's the only thing I have, versus buying, going through Costco and buying things. And again, with Jeff, with his son, you know, turning 14 in just a few days, uh, before you know it, it, it he's going to be driving. You know, that's a scary thought. But uh, I don't know what, if they get permanent at 15 in, in North Carolina or 16, but. Uh, Driver's Ed soon. <laughs> yeah, that's why I bought my wife a car because we uh, have one turning um, 16 in March. So we need a car. So that's why, that's why we just purchased. So that that's her early present, by the way. Well, there you go. That's a very, that's not a cheap present either. Um, and that's the thing is that I would definitely would recommend to anyone who is out there looking to shop for Christmas stuff. Make sure you're making a list kind of like Santa Claus checking it twice Talking to, if you have elf in the shelf, make sure you talk to your elf in the shelf, find out what's going on with them and talking to Santa or whoever else you're talking to. But make sure that you get the stuff done because even gift cards sometimes can be hard to find uh for things. So make sure that uh you, you're on top of it and not uh procrastinate too much because it can create a lot of headaches. Uh, it, it's it's amazing to me how fast we can go through an hour on this show uh, no just talking and chatting, you know. <laughs> and we can't do this without you out there watching. So make sure you uh, always tune in here on Tuesday nights on the tubes or on on um, Twitch. If you're watching on the tubes, make sure you click like, subscribe, and the bell icon. And make sure you follow everyone here on their channels. But again, I appreciate you out there watching the show, and I appreciate everything you guys do. And make sure, again, like before, 
you spend some time for yourself, your friends and family, it's that time of year. Yeah, sometimes they're a pain in the rear end, but love it, embrace it, enjoy it. Because one day you got to look back and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to forget I love this person or I cared about this person. There's this friend, this family member or whomever it is. And this is the time of year to uh, make sure you you appreciate people. And also, if you run into a store, that retail employee, that person at a restaurant, thank them because they're working hard, very hard, and always appreciate everyone there. Just like we want to be appreciated, make sure you appreciate other people. And one other thing I'm going to challenge everyone here, do something nice, pay it forward. You know, if you're at Starbucks, buy a coffee for the person behind you. Do something like that. You're at Dunkin' Donuts. You're at whatever. Buy a coffee for someone. Do something nice like that. And, you know, help people out. That's all. To be friendly and be nice. Other than that, guys, enjoy the holiday season. We will be back here again next week with the show. And I want to thank you all for being here. And thank the whole entire panel for being here. Other than that, guys, have a good night. And because Hunter is not here this week, I'm going to have Jeff. Jeff, take us out. Peace out. Have a good weekend. See you next time. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs>